Hey everyone, my name is Rohan Kapoor and in this module I'll be introducing algorithms and algorithm design. Okay, so what is an algorithm? Well, in mathematics and computer science, an algorithm is nothing more than a self-contained step-by-step set of operations to be performed. Algorithms exist that perform calculations, data processing, and automated reasoning. An algorithm is a step-by-step -step procedure which defines a set of instructions to be executed in a certain order to get the desired output. Algorithms are generally created independent of underlying languages, i.e. an algorithm can be implemented in more than one programming language. An algorithm is an effective method that can be expressed within a finite amount of space and time and in a well-defined formal language for calculating a function. Starting from an initial state and initial input, which may very well be empty, the instructions describe a computation that, when executed, proceeds through a finite number of well-defined successive states, eventually producing output and terminating at a final ending state. From a data structure point of view, the following are some important categories of algorithms. Searching algorithms are algorithms used to search an item in a data structure. Sorting algorithms sort items in a certain order. Insert algorithms insert items into a data structure. Update algorithms update an existing item in a data structure. And delete algorithms, or deletion algorithms, delete an existing item from a data structure. But not any procedure can be denoted an algorithm. An algorithm should have a set of characteristics, of which are listed on this slide. First of all, an algorithm should be clear and unambiguous. Each of its steps or faces and the inputs and outputs should be clear and mostly to only one meaning. On top of this, an algorithm should have zero or more well-defined inputs, and it should have one or more well-defined outputs, which should match the desired outputs. An algorithm must also terminate after a finite number of steps, and should be feasible with the available resources. Lastly, an algorithm should have step-by-step -step directions, which should be independent of any sort of programming language or code. So how does one go about writing an algorithm? Well, there are no well-defined standards for writing algorithms. Rather, it is problem and resource dependent. Algorithms are never written to support a particular programming language. As we know that all programming languages, though, share basic code constructs like loops, do, for, while, flow control, if else, etc., these common constructs can be used to write an algorithm. We write algorithms in a step-by-step -step manner, but this is not always the case. Algorithm writing is a process and is executed after the problem domain is well defined. That is, we should know the problem domain for which we are designing a solution for. Let's try to learn algorithm writing by using an example. The problem we shall take is design an algorithm to add two numbers and display the result. The algorithm for this problem would go something like this. The first step would be start, that is, we start the program. In the second step, we will declare three integers, a, b, and c. In the third step, we will define the values of a and b. So these are the two values that we will be adding together. Uh, obviously, that's what we do in the fourth step. We add these values. And then in the fifth step, we store the output of the addition, just the value c. So now c will be equal to a plus b. In the sixth step, we print c, uh, so we output it. And in the seventh step, we stop the algorithm or the program. In this sense, algorithms tell the programmers how to code the program. Alternatively, the algorithm for the same problem can be written as this. We design an algorithm to get the solution of a given problem. But a problem can be solved in more than one way. Hence, many solution algorithms can be derived for a given problem. Our next step is to analyze those proposed solution algorithms and implement the best suitable one. So now let us look at analyzing algorithms. The efficiency of an algorithm can be analyzed at two different stages, before implementation and after implementation. A priori analysis is a theoretical analysis of an algorithm, so before implementation. Efficiency of an algorithm is measured by assuming that all other factors, like the processor speed, are constant and have no effect on the implementation. On the other hand, a posterior analysis is the empirical analysis of an algorithm. The selected algorithm is implemented using a programming language. This is then executed on a target computer machine. In this analysis, actual statistics 
like the running time and space required, are collected. We shall learn here a priori and algorithm analysis. Algorithm analysis deals with the execution or running time of various operations involved. The running time of an operation can be defined as the number of computer instructions executed per operation. So suppose x is an algorithm and n is the size of the input data to that algorithm. The time and space used by the algorithm x are the two main factors which decide the efficiency of x. Now the time factor is a time measured by counting the number of key operations, such as the comparisons in a sorting algorithm. The space measured by counting the maximum memory space required by the algorithm is the space factor. The complexity of an algorithm f of n gives the running time and or the space or the storage space required by the algorithm in terms of n as the size of the input data. So the space complexity of an algorithm represents the amount of memory space required by an algorithm in its life cycle. Space required by an algorithm is equal to the sum of the following two components. The first component is a fixed part that is the space required to store certain data and variables that are independent of the size of the problem or the size of the input data. For example, simple variables and constants used, program size, etc. A variable part is a space required by variables whose size depends on the size of the problem. This is the second component. For example, dynamic memory allocation, recursion, stack space, etc. Space complexity S of P of any algorithm P is S of P is equal to C plus S P of I, where C is a fixed part and S of I is the variable part of the algorithm which depends on the instance characteristic I. So the following is a simple example that tries to explain the concept of space complexity. Here we have three variables, a, b, and c, and one constant. Hence, s of p is equal to one plus three. Now, space depends on data types of given var variables and constant types, and it will be multiplied accordingly. The time complexity of an algorithm represents the amount of time required by the algorithm to run to completion. Time requirements can be defined as a numerical function t of n, where n can be measured as the number of steps, provided each step consumes constant time. For example, addition of two n-bit integers takes n steps. Consequently, the total computational time is t of n is equal to c times n, where c is the time taken for the addition of two bits. Here, we observe that t of n grows linearly as the input size increases. And that concludes our video. This course was created as a part of the Stanford Crowd Course Initiative, the world's first massive online open coursework developed entirely by an online community. If you'd like to learn more about us or view more courses, visit crowdcourse.stanford.edu.